Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're going to teach Brian Denlinger an English lesson. Now, I'm not really an English teacher, but uh, you know, I'm going to go over this just rushing it without putting a lot of thought into it. I'm just going to wing it like I've been saying a lot lately. But you really don't have to put a lot of thought into this, you know. Um, anybody should be able to understand this. So anyways, let's look here at John chapter 12, verse 27. It says, Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say, Father, save me from this hour, but for this cause came I unto this hour. Now I just want to point out here that in this verse it says, my soul. Okay, well who is speaking? Jesus is speaking, the Son. So, Jesus says that this is his soul. He possesses it. So, when it says my soul, whose soul is it? Is it the Father's soul? No, it's not the Father's soul. It's the Son's soul. It's Jesus. Jesus is saying, my soul is troubled. Okay. And then he says, and what shall I say? Father. Okay. Father, save me from this hour. Jesus says, my soul is troubled. Does he mean that his soul is the Father? No. That would be the same to say as this. Now, I wrote this to be a little bit similar. Here's another sentence. My arm is broke. Father, can you fix it? my arm okay let's just say that this is me speaking this is my arm my arm is broke i possess this arm it's part of me so would it be uh logical to say that my arm is my father no nobody would draw that conclusion from the sentence who would draw that conclusion my arm is broke father can you fix it obviously i'm speaking to a person here my arm is a part of me. Father is a person, not a part, not my arm, you see. Uh, anyways, I want to draw some other illustrations, and like I said, this wasn't really thought out a whole lot. I want to do more on this subject, but I'm going to go over briefly some other thoughts that hopefully I can, hopefully it'll help maybe a little bit with me drawing it out here, okay? So here we go. Now, we have, you know, a, I've said this previously, a person possesses a part, okay, or parts. Now, but I've said that um, I've changed my position here. Basically, two of the most popular views we have of the nature of man here, of, of you know, parts that they're made up of. We have dichotomy, and we have trichotomy. Okay. Now, what Denlinger is teaching is a trichotomy. It's pretty popular. I used to think that it was biblical. Not anymore. Okay, so we got that. And so, with dichotomy, we have that man is made up of a body and then he's made up of a soul or spirit they can be used interchangeably okay the words means the same thing it means that there's a material which is the body and a immaterial which is the soul or the spirit okay and then over here in the trichotomy, they have it split up into three parts. They have the body, the soul, and the spirit. And that's basically just based off of a couple of verses, uh, where one where Paul mentions body, soul, and spirit. And um, but you know, I'm going to go over these things more in a future study, hopefully soon, and go through a lot of verses and break it down more. I'm just giving you a brief overview now, but. Uh, just because Paul says body, soul, and spirit doesn't mean that man is broken up into three parts, body, soul, and spirit. Okay, he means, when, when Paul's speaking in that verse, he means your whole being. Okay, praise God or worship God with your whole being is what it means. And it's, it's figurative in a sense. So, uh, but you know, there's verses where I think Jesus says that you're to worship God, you know, with, with all your mind, with all your heart. You know, with all your soul, with all your strength, does that mean that man is split up into four parts? No, it doesn't. Okay, it's emphasizing more, you know, your whole being 
And so, <clears throat> but I want to point this out because, you know, when Brian Denlinger is teaching that, um, that the Godhead is a trinity, or the, I'm sorry, when Brian Denlinger is saying that the Godhead is body, soul, and spirit, and then he says that man was made in his image, and man has body, soul, and spirit. This whole idea is just wrong to begin with. Okay, man's not made up of three parts. It's basically two parts. Okay, body and soul. So he starts off wrong with there, first of all. When it says that God has made man in his image, and I think that I've maybe taught that wrong because I followed through with this because it was a pretty popular belief. But anyways, <clears throat> when it says that God made man in his image, it means that he gave man the ability to reason. Okay? Animals don't have the ability to reason. It's as simple as that. So, let's see here. And again, no, I don't even know what else I was going to draw out, how, how I could do this here. But, you know, okay, Denlinger says that, uh, let's just make sure that this is Denlinger. He says, Denlinger says, you know, God is the Father equals the Soul Son equals the body and spirit equals spirit and keep in mind that you know as I've explained that this is <clears throat> he's comparing this to what he believes that man is made up of but man is not made up of three parts as such only two now Jesus <sighs> is fully man, fully God and fully man, okay? Fully God and fully man. Or truly God, truly man, however, I'm going to word that. That means that Jesus, to be truly man, had to have a human body, okay, a reasonable body, they say, and and soul. Okay? But, Denlinger over here is teaching that the Father is the soul. Okay? And in that verse that I just read, where it says, my soul is troubled, and then he says, Father. He says, that speak, he says what he says, my soul, he's speaking of the Father. So right there he's saying that the soul of Jesus is the Father. Okay? Now, it was Jesus in his humanity that was troubled, okay? And that's figurative, him saying, my soul, you know, it's, it's like his mind is troubled. He's stressed beyond belief, okay? It's speaking of him, okay, his entire being is stressed, and so he prays to the Father, just like we should, just like we would, and we do. So, these are some issues. These are some real issues here, and uh, it's really bizarre. I've never even really heard anybody else teach this. Uh, to this extreme, anyways, uh, anyway, <laughs> but, you know, I don't know, I, I was going to draw out some other things and then try to explain better, but, just because I'm winging it, I'm kind of just drawing a blank, but, I hope still that this demonstration has helped a little bit, um, and as I've said, there's a, a heresy called Apollinarianism, which teaches basically that the Holy Spirit was the Spirit of Jesus, and that's basically what Brian Denlinger is teaching. And so it's kind of denying his humanity. Um, you know, so just remember, you know, a person possesses parts, okay? So, uh, yeah, let's, I can talk about that, I guess, more. That's kind of what I wanted to cover, too. Okay. Let's see here. Let's you know I've made a video that I really love on a, on person and nature, and so uh, you know let's talk person. Okay, the father. That's a person. The son and the Holy Spirit. Okay.
these are all persons. Okay? So, how do we know that they're persons? Because when we read the Bible, we see them spoken of as he. Okay? Or, you know, I. Or, um, you know, like my, like Jesus said my, you know, things like these. These are personal words, okay, that, that are used of a person. He, okay, you know, when we talk about a tree or something, some inanimate object, okay, let's see, uh, let's just, here, I'll get some drawings out here. Let's just do that. That's pretty easy, right? We got a tree there, okay? Is this he? Is this he? No, that's not he, okay? That's a tree. It's the tree or a tree. It's not a person. But a father is a person, son's a person. He, I, my. That's how we know that the person, because that's that's English. That's you know that's what we learn early on. So, so what about you know a body or a soul? Okay, we got. So let's say body and soul. We got body and we got soul. Okay, a person possesses these. Okay. A person possesses a body and a soul. That's you know, part of being, you know, a human person. So, <laughs> you know, I'm just drawing a blank here, but you need to realize, you know, what a person is and what a part is. And so Dillinger is trying to confuse these things. He's saying that the Father is the soul. No, the Father is a person. Okay. Jesus is a person. And Jesus was fully man. And he had to have a body and a soul. In order for his sacrifice to be sufficient for us, he had to be like us, but without sin. Okay. And, uh, and Dinling even quoted the verse which said that uh, Jesus gave up the ghost. It's speaking of, you know, his soul, he died on the cross. Okay. So, uh, anyways. Also, Dinlinger has this whole kick of saying, you know, not saying words that aren't used in the King James Bible. It's just absurd. And I actually heard him say in one video... <clears throat> That uh, the reason he says he says that he says Bible and then he's like, well, I know that Bible's not in the Bible, but there's no other word for it. But yet, at the beginning of that video, he was saying the Word of God over and over again. So yeah, the Word of God would be a word for it. Scripture would be a word for it. So there's plenty of words that you could use instead of Bible that are from the King James Bible. But the whole thing is just absurd. Um, his uh, triad against the Trinity and uh, so I want to go into more detail and, and do better videos on this, but this is just the start. So I'm just going to end this here. Uh, thanks for watching. God bless.